Lazada has arrived. This is how you shop in Malaysia and our dinner. those of you who don't know me and I am an American who lives in Malaysia but we have been gone from our home in Malaysia for 15 months and we just got back two weeks ago which means I returned to a completely empty fridge pantry freezer everything I had cleared out before we left so I had to start from scratch and so I filmed the process because I know a lot of you are just getting started on a plant-based diet or want to know basic vegan pantry staples to have in your pantry. So I'm going to show you what I did, how I store and organize my food. It's a little different here in Malaysia than maybe I would store my food in America because we have a lot of bug, it's super humid, but maybe it'll give you some ideas for how to organize your pantry and hopefully you find it helpful if you're just getting started on a plant-based diet and are curious what a nine-year plant-based eater has in her pantry. All right, let's see what we got. So I went back to America thinking we'd be gone for about six to nine months. And so I was hoping some of my dry pantry items would still be okay when we got back, but we ended up being gone for 15, 16 months and a lot of the things that I had held onto had bugs or were just stinky. So the first thing I did was get rid of all of the gross food in my pantry, take all of the containers out, wipe down the shelves until I was left with basically the bare minimum. Other than some items I picked up at the airport right when we got back into Malaysia. So once our pantry was nicely cleaned out and wiped down, I started restocking it. So for the first few days we were back in Malaysia, I did some online shopping, I went to a few grocery stores. I kind of know at this point where I like to get certain items and so I did a bunch of shopping from different places just to get what we needed at a good price. So as you can see here, I'm pouring our cereal into some tightly sealable containers just so that we don't get bugs. But as you can see, I was still checking for bugs as we went, this box seems suspicious and it turned out it had some kind of moth in it. Yes, we did keep it. I didn't notice anything else weird. I just told my husband to eat it at his own risk. And as you can see, I still nibbled on it. Call me gross. It was good and we did finish this container and found nothing else weird. Since we don't eat our cereal very often, we like to store it really well so that we don't get any bugs and that it doesn't get stale. So here is our very high up cereal shelf that we eat on occasion. And even though we don't eat it often, we love to mix our cereals when we do enjoy it. So let me know down below if you too are a cereal mixer. Again, I'm storing another type of cereal that I only seem to like, but I'm putting some wheat bix into a container, making sure it's sealed tight before storing it in my pantry. It did take quite some time to get my pantry fully stocked because I did a lot of online orders and Lazada orders, and so it took a little while for things to arrive. Can you help? Take it out. But here I'm unloading some pantry items as well as some household items, including flowers, oil, baking powder, that was not what I ordered, but it ended up working out fine, and some cocoa powder, things like that that I had gotten from Tesco. Next, I unloaded a bunch of canned items that I got from a different store because they had better variety. So definitely check out different stores, make sure you get what you want so that you actually use what's in your pantry. I've been eating a plant-based diet for quite a while now, so I kind of know our basic staples. And so that's what I was unloading here. Hopefully you guys are getting a realistic picture of what stocking a pantry could look like, especially with kids around who are getting used to tile floors. things and 
falling and hitting his head. But as soon as I would get a new pantry item, I often would put it into some tightly sealable containers just so that we never got weevils, and I would quickly store it in my pantry just so that I could start using the items that I was buying. We love both brown and white rice, so that is what I am storing in containers here. I thankfully have a lot of pantry space in my kitchen in Malaysia. I actually have two kitchens. I have a wet kitchen and a dry kitchen, but maybe that would be a video for a house tour or something like that. Anyways, I am putting all of the items that I like to use on a daily basis on the lower shelf so that I can reach it easily and some other items that I don't use as often higher up. It was very hard to get rid of a lot of the spices that I had left in my kitchen before we went to America. I thought they would last, but quite a few of them had gone off. I actually got some good advice from some friends who are from Malaysia and they said to smell them. My friend said that a lot of the dried herbs like thyme, dill, parsley, those things would smell musty and you should probably get rid of them. Things like cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves usually last pretty well as well as turmeric. And then things like garlic powder and onion powder are usually hard as a rock and that was the case for me so I had to get rid of quite a few spices and replenish my stash so that I could get cooking right away. Another area of my pantry that I wanted to stock quickly was my baking section. I bake a ton for breakfast items or for blog recipes. So here I am putting some all-purpose flour into a container as well as some cane sugar and other baking items just to get them in a working order and in aesthetically pleasing containers. has arrived. This is how you shop in Malaysia and our dinner. So the last main order that arrived was from an online store called Lazada. It's basically the Malaysian version of Amazon. Not as good, but I can get quite a few things there that might be cheaper or I can get them in bulk so that I don't spend as much money from the grocery store. So here I am unpacking quite a few bulk nuts, coconut sugar, nutritional yeast, stuff like that. Sadly, it came with a lot of packaging, but thankfully we have a recycling program now in our apartment, so that made it less painful to have so many boxes and plastic. Stricken cactus and it starts to rain. The smell of steamed asphalt scented Novocaine. Nature's brew of all kinds of things. The mountain sunk hill sky color schemes makes you forget about all types of things. You remind me of the Arizona thunder. Satisfy the time. Endless roads to the horizon Pass 
past the oasis, it's all behind ya. Mirage of Agua, the stars above ya. The creature's days to nocturnal days makes you forget about all types of things. You remind me of the Arizona. After organizing and putting away all of the baking ingredients that I got from Lazada, I started to organize my condiment section. So this is a very basic vegan pantry tour for sure. Usually I would have a lot more items, but here I just started with the basics and I'll talk about what items I purchased later in the video. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, you will know that I love my dry erase markers to use either on my containers or my tiles. They just work great for an easy to change label maker, I guess you could say. So here I'm writing the ingredient names on the containers as well as any other information I would need to know such as cooking times or amount just so that I cannot forget what I have and don't get confused. The last area I stocked was my freezer. So I store most of my nuts in my freezer just because I don't want them to go bad. And I also store my ground flaxseed in my freezer. So here I am stuffing it full. And now here's the aftermath of a big day of unboxing, stocking, unpacking, cleaning, making a mess. And yes, this is definitely the messiest my kitchen has ever been. Now that we've got most of the items put away and the recycle taken out, let me give you a tour. Okay, I am a huge baker and making muffins and oatmeal and stuff like that for breakfast is really important for me. Just because it's easy meal prep, my kids and my husband love it. So let me show you kind of my baking section and what I have here. I try to organize things by category so this is definitely a baking breakfast area and I find it really helpful if I want to bake or make anything for breakfast I can just do it all right here in a bowl and just take things down as I need it so let me show you what I got up here so I hope the amount of sugar doesn't freak you out but I am a food blogger and I like to cater to people that eat a standard American diet so I often have normal cane sugar and brown sugar and we try to eat coconut sugar as well as just maple syrup or honey um, because it's hard to find maple syrup here but this is the desserty baked good section so you've got your white flour whole wheat flour different kinds of sugar icing sugar for scones or frosting on special occasions and then in here this is just kind of my leavening agents baking soda baking powder vanilla, some flaked sea salt for chocolate chip cookies. And I find it hard to find dairy-free chocolate here in Malaysia, so I usually just buy some chocolate bars and then chop them up. And I will probably put this in a jar, but I am out. So that's kind of just baking ingredients that you need every time you bake that I can just pull down and use as I need. And then here is definitely the oats, baked oatmeal, more nut seed section. So I make chocolate oatmeal almost every morning. So I've got my cocoa powder and my quick oats and rolled oats all right there, as well as my chia seeds. And we've got our vitamins. We've got some pumpkin seeds that I put on my oats, some digestive cookies that we've grown to love, different nuts that we eat on a daily basis, some vitamins and cacao chips. And then when I'm cooking or baking for gluten-free friends, I like to have gluten-free one-to-one flour. And so this is definitely a very used section of the pantry. And up there, I just have some extra cake decorating things, big block of cocoa butter and some other bits and bobs. So this is the baking section. So this is my dried goods canned section and I love having it right above where I often cook. I've got an electric stove top right there so I can just reach up, grab my beans, my pasta, my tomato sauce, coconut milk for curries, and just have it all right on hand. So up here we've got some coconut milk products. The coconut, um, sweet and condensed coconut milk is for making homemade ice cream. And then we've got our coconut cream for curries, 
as well as some more specially canned items that we use not as often, um, so that's why they're up higher. And then here we have kind of our everyday tons of beans. We do a ton of chickpeas for sure, as well as other beans. And then we love pasta, we love noodles. So usually I just put my noodles in these containers, write down what kind they are the time that they need to cook and the amount. So we've got some whole wheat noodles, some shells for the kids for mac and cheese, buckwheat penne, and a bunch of other pastas as well as quinoa, tomato sauces, and veggie broth. So this is kind of the cooking section that has most of the things I need to whip up quick and simple dinners. As you can see so far, I have everything in individual sealable containers because we have a ton of bugs. I don't know if this is how I would do it if I was in the States. I have seen another method where you have big baskets and you just put all your different bags of pasta in the pasta basket. And I find that really practical. So you can just pull out all your pasta, see what you want, and you don't have to worry about everything being the perfect size to fit in these containers. But for us and all the weevils we have, I have decided to make sure everything is in airtight sealed containers so that we don't waste a bunch of food. In this section over here, we have a bunch of cereal and granola. I don't like to start my day with cereal, but my husband loves it for nighttime snacks, and then my kids have it on occasionally, maybe once a week for breakfast. So we have homemade granola up there and wheat bix, and then three types of cereal because we are mixers. Let me know down below if you guys mix your cereal too. So that's our cereal breakfasty stash. Below that, We've kind of got our snack chip area. Again, this really just depends on what you like, what you want in your pantry. We do love tortilla chips because we have taco bowls most weeks. And so that's just a fun snack. And then we have more rice cakes, whole grain crackers up there for hummus or to have just as a snack while we're in between meals. And then nutritional yeast. Um, I'm not quite sure where to put that, but that's where I have it for now. We do a ton of milk just with baking and having a little guy that likes to drink his milk. So I have all different kinds of milk here, depending on what we're doing. Then I've got some pretzels and some other snacky things. And then down here, I've got a big container of white rice, brown rice, and then my raw peanuts that I use to make peanut butter. So we've kind of got our dry, snacky pantry items here. Okay, I'm up super high in my condiments, cooking, vinegar, oil section. And I'll just kind of walk you through everything that I have here. I find it very basic. I'm sure I will acquire more condiments and sauces as we live here longer, but this is a great start if you're just getting started in on a plant-based diet. You don't really need too much to get started, so let me show you everything I have. So I love to use coconut oil when baking or making scones, so I've got a couple jars of that, and then because I can't find maple syrup here, we do occasionally have honey, um, and I find it affordable, so we choose to have some honey on hand. So this is kind of more baking, type of products for muffins and stuff like that. And then over here, I've got more of our savory condiments. So I love to have all different kinds of vinegars. Right now I just have apple cider vinegar. I find that a great just beginner vinegar to have on hand because it can go sweet or savory, makes vegan buttermilk, all kinds of stuff like that. I try not to use this too often, but when I'm baking, sometimes I'll use canola oil. And then we eat a ton of Asian recipes and I find Asian food super easy to veganize or to make plant-based. So I've got some organic toasted sesame oil, I've got some poison sauce, rice vinegar, mirin. I've got all kinds of different soy sauces that are actually in my fridge because they say to refrigerate. So I've got all kinds of different soy sauces and you can whip up a really delicious Asian meal or Asian inspired sauce with these ingredients. And then of course we've got our nut butters here. We go through them so fast that I don't feel the need to refrigerate, but I've got some homemade almond butter, peanut butter, and then some store-bought peanut butter that I had bought to get us through and I accidentally bought no salt, which we don't like. So we're working our way through that, but this is kind of condiment and sauce area. So I freeze our nuts um, and we have a lot of them because I use them for sauces, for snacks, for granola, for 
um, just eating raw, we add them and eat them every day. Add them to everything and eat them every day. So I've got some almond flour, got two bags of walnuts, um, we've got some bread here, we've got almonds, cashews, and more almonds. So we definitely refrigerate or freeze our nuts so that they don't go bad. We also freeze our flax seeds. So I always have flax seed on hand. We eat it every day and it's just a great thing to add to oatmeal or to put in your granola bars. So this is my spice rack that I fill with all the spices I use on a regular basis and I keep it by my gas stove. I do have two stoves. I do have two kitchens here in America, uh, Malaysia, which is amazing. And I have Italian spices like oregano, thyme, Italian herbs. Um, I've got your basics like onion and garlic powder, ginger, curry powder. Cumin is a big one that I use every day probably. I've got more fancier, less used in America spices, which would be garam masala, um, turmeric, coriander, chili, and then I always have paprika. And then I've just got some other spices and spice blends like satay spice, za'atar spice, liquid smoke is a huge Thing I recommend having in a vegan pantry. It makes things kind of taste meaty or smoked and makes great cheeses and stuff like that. And then of course I've got some cinnamon because we use that every day. And then another thing that I like to have in my plant-based pantry is black salt or kalam namak. Wow, I haven't said that out loud. But this makes things taste eggy. It kind of has a sulfuric smell. So not the greatest smell, but um, yeah, you can use it on tofu to make tofu scrambles or stuff like that. Kind of makes stuff taste eggy. And then of course I've just got your regular iodized salt, sea salt, and olive oil for cooking. So this is my spice area. Love it. Use it every day. Okay guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the tour of my basic vegan pantry. I have created a shopping list for a basic vegan pantry that I've linked down below. You can download it, print it out, go shopping and start building your basic vegan pantry today. So I hope you guys check that out and I'll see you very soon. Bye.